let's get to Spidey for Spidey. Mm -hmm. Brian Tom Holland just wrote. I mean, not just wrote. Well, he wrote his signature on, and and, and <laughs> he's in uh <laughs> he's in it for a trilogy and some appearances in yep. Avengers. Yep. He he's gonna have apparently, from what I've heard, he's gonna have some uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, relationship with yeah. Tom Holland, which is weird. I don't know if you Very. got some insight on that. Um, but Brian, what do we expect from this Spidey Four? Apparently, Brian, Zoe Saldana is out. Not Zoe Saldana. Um, Zendaya. Zendaya is out. Apparently, from what I heard, there's rumor that she's not in this. That's what I heard. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Interesting. But we'll discuss that once we get confirmation of that. But uh, Brian, your thoughts on what's happening with Spidey Four? Well, I just I think the the main takeaway is um, they're definitely fast tracking this, right? So the latest report is they got a May twenty fifth filming date in the UK, going to shoot May to October. We had previously heard um, Holland's filming schedule was going to be set up so that he could do both that and Avengers five um, simultaneously. So I think it's just more this movie's happening like they've they've whatever they it, it feels like they've resolved the storyline i think marvel won this based upon what we're hearing about like the contractual situation about holland getting permission now to be in other mcu projects and kind of back to where we were which sort of has always been marvel winning the storytelling battle and that's just good the thing is brian sony has nothing to, to let they have nothing to be like pop their chest up they have nothing to say well i think they my theory Other than on what we happens have in that see my theory yeah my theory on what happens in that room is every time a spider-man movie comes out and does well which obviously homecoming far from home no way home all did sony leads the conversation with yeah but it's our character it's yeah. us we did that yeah. and then the conversation always ends with kevin being like yeah but who, gave, right. you the, who gave you the idea who gave yeah. you the story good luck yeah. let me know how that goes i'll be waiting and then <laughs> Sony kind of puts their hands together. Sony puts their hands together. It's like, <laughs> guy, like, and then they, they, that's how I always, that's how I always imagine it. That's always yeah, how I imagine yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but you're right. There's been a rumor uh, about casting a new female lead. I don't interpret that necessarily that Zendaya is out of the role. I simply interpret that as MJ is not the female lead of the movie. Because remember in like Homecoming, like Laura Harrier's character was the female lead of that. And MJ was like a peripheral. Oh, there she is. Right. I think it's more like that. I think it's in the reset friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Based upon wherever they're taking the story. Now that they don't, MJ doesn't remember him. She might be in the movie, but she's no longer like the primary relationship. So the one they're talking about is maybe the that black cat is sort of the the opposite for him in this particular movie. I, I can see that. I don't think, like I said, I don't think it precludes Zendaya coming back. I think it could just be there freshening up the, the yeah. interplay and the dynamics. And the possibilities. But uh, again, there's always that question and people brought it up on Reddit that she doesn't remember Peter, but she'd certainly remember Spider-Man. So it'll be interesting to understand that aspect. Can we talk about this Downey thing? Because it just makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. So there, there is this blurb in this, in this Spider-Man 4 filming thing that says the, um, the Doctor Doom is having a role in Spider-Man 4. And that Doom and Peter Parker have a relationship that will carry forward in a pivotal way to Avengers 5. I'm confused. <laughs> like, and I think they're going for the shock value of Downey's Stark brought Holland's Parker into the MCU, and they want it to be jarring for you to see those two on screen now with a different, maybe antagonistic relationship. But I don't know. You do you like that idea? I don't like any idea of Robert Downey Jr. being back. Other than life model decoy, I don't like any idea. I don't. I don't like them having to play on a dynamic that worked before. Now they're redoing everything, but different. 
It's like it reminds me of uh, Beverly Hills Cop Two, Johnny Wishbone. It's like cables, it's like cables and bits, but different. <laughs> All right, but we just have to wait and see. I, I can't. I would say that the in the dynamics of understanding of how Tom Holland gets to see RDJ's doom and what that will be like, how they make this work is what interests me, Brian, how they make this work. But that's weird because it's like, it is weird. The impact, the impact of that visual is more for us as the audience than it is for Peter. Cause don't tell me that like, Peter's going to be like, Hey, you look just like Tony Stark. That's a, he's not going to do that. Doesn't make any sense unless it yeah, is yeah. Tony Stark, right? Yeah. Which they're telling us it's not. It still could be, I guess, unless it's an old universe man. Tony Stark. But then yeah, maybe, I, then maybe it makes a little more sense. But I'm, you see what I'm saying? Like that is more for us going to the theater, saying we're used to those two guys being almost like father and son on screen, yeah. and now the father's trying to presumably undercut and ultimately destroy the son. But Peter doesn't feel that. In th this Peter seems unrealistic. I don't see how he would know that. So it d that's what feels bizarre to me. It's like if the playbook here is to have Downey somewhat retrace his steps with these characters that he built chemistry with as a hero, but now he's going to be a villain and he's then therefore going to be out of the mask a lot of the time. Like, I don't think that's a good idea. Like, I don't yeah. know what the analogy is. I remember at one point when James Cameron was going to do Terminator 2, his original idea was to have Michael Bean be the T-1000 so that the Kyle Reese would be the villain and Arnold would be the hero. So they would flip the visual from Terminator 1. And they determined that that would have been too, too overwhelming for Sarah, who was already in the insane asylum, to do that. And they, they wound up with Robert Patrick. But this, that kind of feels like what they're trying to do here. It's like, we're going to put Downey in the villain role, but then have him kind of do these things that he did as Tony Stark and interact with people as he did with Tony Stark, but now he's going to be the villain to them. Um, I don't know. It, it, it scares me, man. It's just like, I still haven't seen the thing where I'm like, aha, this makes sense to me as to what they're doing with the Downey doom, but he's working a lot, Pablo. So we get, I think we're getting our answer as to like how in Downey is from a time commitment standpoint. He's putting in work. Cause think about this. So he's going to cameo supposedly in fantastic four. He's got a role supposedly in this movie. We know. And then for Avengers five, the report that came out is that he, he has the most days on set of any character in that movie. So he's working supposedly like 90 days on that movie. None of the heroes is working more than 30 was the report. Interesting. So they were going to bring in groups of heroes, they said, for like a month at a time. But he would always be working through that opposite all of them. Let's see how they make this work, Brian. It means it's on him. It means they really are putting it on him again. Like legit are putting it on him to save this enterprise. Didn't they put it on him when he did Doolittle? Wasn't it on him? There was another rumor that Captain Marvel has a major role to play. Oh, I read that. <laughs> <laughs> and the and first, my, the first question, the first word that came out of my mind that jumped out was why, right? Like, why is she involved in this in any way? What are they trying to? What I, I don't know, Brian. I don't know, Brian. Then we got a thing saying Scarlet Witch has a major role to play in Avengers five and six. And then we got, obviously, we know Tom Holland has a major role to play in a yeah, yeah, yeah. five and six. This is the story. No matter what anybody says, the story is how do they make this all work? But the other thing I hear when I hear <clears throat> that is cut to Shang-Chi on the bench. Put me in, coach. <laughs> Where are the new characters? I know all three of them. Yeah. I know yeah. all three of them. So are we really going to do this? We're now we know the Fantastic Four is new and they're coming, but so we're really we're really going to ride with all these old characters, and we're just going to pretend like everyone we try to introduce after Endgame is going to what be squashed by Doom in the first scene, like in Transformers the movie. We're just going to just wipe them out in the first twenty minutes. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, man. What Marvel is cooking up because based on what we know 
as the ingredients to all of this, they don't look like they mix well. Uh, but I'm always uh, around to be pleasantly surprised at the result. If you're able to, t to convince me that this is not going to be a desperate attempt that you cooking up something that you have no idea what you're doing, but you're trying to relive that first meal that you created that was amazing. Can they pull it off, Brian? That's the story. I know it's box office suicide to do this, but <clears throat> I am still buying James Gunn's DC and I'm selling Kevin Marvel's Feige right here. I, I would oh, rather no, bet on a portfolio of Superman, Batman slash Penguins, Lantern, and Supergirl than I would on what I'm seeing and hearing out of more established stuff, admittedly, in Cap 4, you know, Avengers 5 and 6. I think other than Spidey 4, which I am mm. getting more excited about, whereas it seems like Marvel's got their, you know, got their eye, eye on the ball there. I think there's more potential for Marvel disappointment and DC upside. And I realize the box office history is not with me when I say that, because everything the Zaslav era has touched has turned to dust. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the state of the MCU and the things that they're trying to attempt and how they're able to make it work because we're getting a lot of stuff that just doesn't look like go they go together. And where is it leading towards if we're all if we all are on, on the same page about it all starting over with Secret Wars, what are some of these storylines going to be? Um, I still think, well, I honestly still think big picture, if I was Disney, I know they probably won't do it, but after they get through the Secret Wars reset, I would, I would put Avengers on the shelf for a while. And I would really focus on mutants. I would let, oh. I just would let time pass, everything settle, let people kind of forget. And then at your opportune moment, you start planting seeds in the X verse, just the way X Men 97 did it. Yeah. Like you just act like you've been there before. All of a sudden, you're doing a show, you're doing a movie, and you're like, that's Steve Rogers. He's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. Like that's, I, I just, just wait a couple of years. Just wait. Be yeah. okay. 